guys, welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Uh, today's video is on some of the best, um, I guess you would call them rock anthems, um, as uh, by Discover Music, uh, the ones that uh, made up this list. Uh, but what I did was I took out the ones I didn't agree with. All right. So uh, these are actually the ones I think best. Uh, Best can best be described as rock anthems. Um, let's take a look. Uh, Bill Haley and the Comets. We're going to rock around the clock from 1954. Uh, the first number one single in Billboard Hot 100 history uh, did not just glorify rock and roll. It introduced it to the world. The term was coined in 47, but no rock song had connected with the public close to the scale of we're going to rock around the clock. Prior to recording the Max Friedman and uh, Jimmy DeKnight pen song, Bill Haley and his bandmates had played hundreds of high school dances, getting hip to the vernacular and dance floor preferences of the American teens. Um, Billy Joel, It's Still Rock and Roll to Me from 1980. Uh, the piano man had grown nostalgic around the early 80s, uh, taking in the hot funk and cool punk of the new wave era only to shrug his shoulders and spit it out the title of this rock classic radio staple. Billy Joel's been a lot of things. Storied songwriter, commercial powerhouse, but he's never quite been cool. On this ode to the doo-wop and R&B he was raised on, however, Joel owns squareness like the rock and roll legend that he is. Uh, Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good from 1958. <clears throat> his signature song glorified rock and roll, sure, but also saluted what rock can do when you play it really well. You get paid. Chuck could riff better than anyone, and with all that duck-walking stage show flair to match, he'd be the first to tell you how rock and roll would make him rich. Johnny's a poor, near-illiterate country boy playing guitar by the railroad tracks, but his chops are so uncanny he doesn't need a rhythm section, just a den of the train to keep his time. His mother's words captured Barry's American dream perfectly. Someday you'll be a man and you will be the leader of a big old band. Elton John's Crocodile Rock, 1972. Crocodile Rock jolted listeners back to their pre-Beatles jukebox dancing days with Elton's live wire for Fisa organ riff and whimsical falsetto uh, guiding the way. He never took this rock and roll song too seriously, but it did do something previous singles Rocket Man and Tiny Dancer didn't reach the peak bill, uh, Billboard's Hot 100 charts, marking Elton's first number one in the U.S. or the U.K. Grand Funk Railroad were an American band, 1973. Prior to recording their signature song, Grand Funk Railroad was embroiled in a legal battle with their recently fired manager, Six albums into the career that would never see them break the Billboard Hot 100 Top 20. And after thundering to number one with We're an American Band, the reputation and homeland of the Rabble Rousers from Flint, Michigan, were swiftly immortalized. Kiss, Detroit Rock City, 1976. Flint Rock City? Detroit just has a better ring to it. It was a live album, 75's Alive, that made Kiss stars. And the iconic group, however, followed it with a rock and roll song that captured all the fire and fury of their concerts. Its unrelenting, death wish dual guitar attack uh, would inspire heavy metal giants of the next decade. And a generation later, Detroit Rock City was further immortalized in a nostalgic comedy of the same name. Queen, We Will Rock You from 1977. Uh... Taurus Brian May wrote We Will Rock You to inspire incendiary uh, crowd chants, uh, and the result was a two-minute torpedo that's gone up to rev up queen crowds, football crowds, basketball crowds, cheerleading competition crowds, academic decathlon crowds. You get the idea. The whole thing is sonic uh, rush, the stomp, the chant, the guitar solo out outro, and the fact it's often heard right after its A-side, a little song with a similar appeal called we are the champions. Bob Seger, old time rock and roll. Uh, by the end of the 70s, disco was huge and here to stay, but this grizzled heartland rocker had some complaints. Unlike the boorish bulk of the disco sucks contingent, uh, he'd he could still get your toe tapping. 
Uh, you'll never even get me out on the floor, Seeger snarls on his love letter to the 60s jukebox heyday, accompanied by a bluesy piano rock jaunt from the Silver Bullet bands. It's nonetheless groovy. And, last but not least, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. I love rock and roll. 70s band called the Arrows wrote it, but couldn't make it a hit. A couple of years later, Joan Jett loved it, but couldn't convince her band. The Runaways to cover it. It all proved worth the wait. Along with the Blackhearts, Jett uh, laid down a swaggering cover song that brought I Love Rock and Roll to the top of the Billboard Hot 100 grit intact. Uh, here's to bringing the classic rock crowd on the dance floor without having to shed your uh, punk cred. And I got some uh, honorable mentions, too, that I didn't add, like uh, Rock and Roll All Night by Kiss. That would be that's probably the Rock and Roll National Anthem, in my opinion. Um, and, and there's others, I'm sure. Uh, what's yours? I'm sure everybody's got favorites. Um, and that's all I got for you. So please, please subscribe and share these out. Thank you. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Really do. Uh, have a great day. God bless you. And yeah, I'll be praying for you. Mm -hmm.